All right, and I'm back. Let me just push uh, here. Okay. All right, and I'm back. So like I said, actually, I don't remember what I said. Oh my God. But hey y'all, it's Asia Simone. Lips popping, skin glowing, energy flowing. And I'm back with another video. Sorry if I'm like not hurting the camera sturdy. I don't really hold the camera. I always have it placed down, as y'all know. So I'm trying to get the right angle. I want to be centered. So anyway, I just want to come before I start the video. My hair is looking like this. This is like a week old. Yeah, so whenever I did the video, post that video up, as you're probably just seeing last week, you know, you see me doing it. This is the week update on it. To twist out. It's looking cute. But it is very dirty, so I need to wash it because I want to give y'all a little disclaimer about in the last video. Because I didn't put it in that video because now, you know, I wore it out. Do not mix the leave-in with that gel because some combos don't work so that combo no no and i should have read in the card like i think the card kind of said that i think i missed that part but yeah that pattern gel and the um mixed chick sleep conditioner don't go together sorry if i'm looking back for i'm trying to stay at the circle y'all know me i said circle beginner youtuber stuff but anyway so yeah i just want to say that do not mix the pattern gel and the mixed chick leave-in do them separately it causes flaking and the little product build balls you know but it looked pretty good, but I still, like, it kept, like, flaking. You know, when it flaked down, like, ah. Like, nobody want to do that. So, don't do that. All right. See you in the rest of the video. Porosity and just natural hair tips, like, hair tight tips. It's not going to be all in porosity, but those are, like, the two I'm focusing on right now. But, I mean, those are two starring. But I'm going to go through a couple of things. Ooh. Because, as y'all know, when I make my videos, I'm always talking about, like, this and that and this and that. And y'all might not know what I'm talking about. Oh, I should have did like a hair um, vocabulary. Maybe I do that. I mean, I do got some stuff right now. I'm going to say that too. But I think I might tell you about tip. I mean, about the terminology so you guys know what I'm talking about. I feel like it's better to know about the terminology because then, then these rules will like make sense. You understand? You feel me? You feel me? Okay. And that's what I'm going to be doing my hair a little bit too. I'm not going to. It's not. This is not a hair tutorial, so. I should probably show you the end result, but y'all won't see me like doing the whole thing like I normally do because this is not a hair. So this is a chit chat talk about natural hair tips and um, terms while I do my hair. Like my hair just decide because I got to eat my hair done. Um, anyway, so let me start with the number one thing I have, which is about porosity. Porosity is important to know when picking out styling products, thickness, textures, and ingredients. And yes, I wrote it down because... Organized. I don't get off topic. I'm, you know, I'm getting off topic. But um, what was I saying? Oh, so porosity in the hair types and the texture thing like that. Porosity is how much your hair will let in and I mean um how your hair lets stuff in and out and from high to normal to low is how much um moisture how many how much oh my gosh I can't describe how much moisture or things your hair will let in the shaft. So like low porosity um. It's hard for products to get absorbed into the shaft. And it like, once it gets in, it stays. But it's very hard, like, wants to repel a lot. So, like, how fast your hair might get wet in the shower. You might notice, like, if your hair's taking a while, you're like, man, why my hair takes so long to, like, get really wet? That's, you'll more likely have low porosity. you more than likely have low porosity. Um, and porosity can change on a numerous of things. So, let's say, no, in the normal porosity, that's just, like, it usually goes in, it stays in, it's pretty good. Not too much of a struggle. Then there's high porosity. And high porosity isn't horrible. It's not, you know, so it's not horrible. But it lets, like, things in quick clap everything in. But also, it lets things out just as quickly. Depending on if you seal it. And that's when it comes into sealing some things. And with hair porosity, you need to seal things. Um, Just to let y'all know, I am norm I have normal porosity. And porosity also can change. Because, like I said, it's your hair shaft. So, the more, like, your hair stretches out and stuff, that can change on it, too. If you dye your hair, of course, your hair, your hair stretch are changing because your hair is dyed that's something important too so it, 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 ooh, it depends on the numerous of things that is something very important porosity how um how much moisture is it i mean how moisture is absorbed into your hair strap either it's low normal high cool you got it we got it so with hair porosity that deals with things like um the type of products you will use so see right here i have a leave-in milk this is very light it's going right in, you know what I'm saying? It's giving moisture, but it could always be like, I, I don't know. For me, my hair, I like to use a little bit more. 
And also you'll see too, like, um, if you have like more low porosity, you'll see how when your hair, like, when the products sit on your hair, I'm trying to say like, sorry. So, you know, when the products like sit on your hair and it's like, it's like, you see how it's white and things like that. That can also determine too, cause it's not, it's not absorbing into your hair shaft as quickly as it would for a normal porosity or a high porosity. So that's things to keep in um, fact too. So I say start low and go on. When you put, you can over moisturize low porosity. That's the thing. So you have to be very careful with if you have low porosity hair to not put too much product on it and weigh it down. And then that causes product buildup. And if you don't take that out, then it leads to breakage and other things like that. Like you don't want to weigh your hair down because when your hair down definitely messes up the shaft and weakens its um, molecules and the strands and things like that. So as you see. You know, let my hair is normal. I put like a little bit. I'm gonna put like what, like four squirts in it. You can already see those like coming to life. It's getting moisturized. It's soaking that hole in. Oh, I just fell. <laughs> and I said it again. But we're not gonna talk about that. I also have my clips and pull my hair out the way. So yeah, those are some little tips about hair porosity. Let's say that was tip number one. Tip number two. Um, we'll talk about. Ooh, let me go my paper. Cause I'm staying on track. And then tip number two, if you want to test out and try to figure out your hair porosity, because you're like, Asia, I hear what you're saying, but I don't know how to do that. How will I find that out? Or it's like, okay, what well, if my hair is absorbing, but it then it's like this and it gets dry fast. Well, here's a secure way to try that I've um, seen from um, online and things like that in the media. Also, don't quote me, but you can quote me. But don't be in my comments or don't be trying to be like, girl, you don't know what you're talking about, da 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 this is not a guarantee. This is what I've learned from other hair naturals and what I've seen on, um, what I've seen online, what I've read in articles and things like that. So this is what I'm getting from the natural hair specialist. So if you're saying it's wrong, okay, then you're usually saying they're wrong because I'm just bringing the facts to your face. You know, I'm just bringing the facts to you guys in a nice and Asian way. You know, it's not a word for it because then that's plagiarism, not verbatim. But, you know, I'm bringing it to you as best as I know how because you yeah. So that is that. So like I said, tip number two is trying the, I've tried the warm water method. And again, you can look up online for other methods because of course there's so many different ways to do certain things and stuff like that. So yeah, I have used the um, warm water test. So it's like you get a cup of warm water, you know, like you detangle hair and get a strand. Mostly clean hair. Don't do no dirty hair because that's going to mess it up. Of course, because it's going to be really full. So it's not going to absorb the water. But anyway, clean hair, get a strand, drop it into the water. If it sinks to the bottom, that's high porosity. If it's like in the middle a little bit, that's normal porosity. And if the top is low porosity, because they didn't want to, you know, they didn't want to get in there. They did not want that. So that's how you determine those things. And you see my hair the tangles. Um, it is gliding. But yeah, that's tip number two. Try the warm water test. Tip number three is hair types. Now let's get this myth out the way, because even I like felt like that way for a second too. I felt like hair types aren't that important. No, no, they're not the oh, most important thing. The most important thing I feel like is moisture and knowing how to moisturize your hair because that's very important because your hair will break off and your hair will not grow and flourish if it is not moisturized and cared for in that way. That's the main thing. But hair type is important, okay? It is a factor. It is something that helps with that. If you know that, it will give you like an upper hand and your hair journey and things like that. I say that because hair type has, um, can, has a lot to do with how to manage your hair how fragile or robust your hair might be and how to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? Because when you're dealing with your hair, if you have type, you have tighter textures, again, it's nothing. And that's the thing too. People are going to get out the stereotype of tighter curls. It's harder to manage and things like that. Well, of course, it's hard to manage. It's not that. It's just you need to know what you're working with. Because when I was younger, and I'm not saying like, again, my hair type doesn't, you know, hair type doesn't change because it's genetics. But you know, it does stretch. It does stretch through elasticity. You can have different hair types over your head. Like, my back of my head and the middle, of course, of the crown is, like, my coarser type. And that's, like, my four scenes. So, like, it's been very coarse. And even in the front, too. Um, but also in the front, it's a little more loose. So, and, like, I think all the good natural. I, feel like, I don't know why. I feel like everybody, I think everybody here is like that. I don't I don't know if there's any person that here. Probably is somebody. But it's very rare for somebody here to just be one texture. But, um. Like I was saying, say I have like tighter textures in the back, in the middle, and then I have my looser, but still tight four. I'm wrong. Still like four B. My still like four B, maybe a four A in the front. You know, you know, maybe you do be looking pretty coily up there, or curly. But um, anyway, 
But yeah, so textures help with how to manage and things like that and how to tangle. Because there's certain tools that you should never, ever use on a natural, on um, tighter cords. And I don't care what nobody say. It is, that is a fact. You got to be careful. Every tool ain't for everybody. And then there's tools that work for you. Like, no one, there's our tools. If there's a bunch of tools for us um, in the four, in the tight four section. But there's certain tools that you just want to use. And also, how you manage your hair. You have to be more fragile. Like, some hair types, they can just wash their hair. I've seen them. They wash it freely no sections mm -mm. y'all need to stop doing that y'all need to watch in sections sections are key even those curls even the curly girls that you know do have the loose sort of textures and they don't like to wash sections that's fine you know they do it sometimes sometimes they do it sometimes they don't but it is nice to wash in sections it just helps keep down the um keeps keep it manageable you know what i'm saying and keep oh, down the tangles like it's kind of wasting your time if you don't it kind of um, wastes your time if you don't keep up with that. Like, that's mm -mm. that's a no-no. So, that's tip three, right? Oh, my gosh. I said so much. I'm sorry. I'm always losing track. I, maybe I'll try to number it for y'all, but I don't know how to edit yet. So, once a girl figure out how to edit, a girl will be doing stuff like that. But I don't know how to do that. So, I don't want to waste my time doing stuff I don't know how to do. But, um, what was I saying? But, oh, yeah. Knowing how, knowing your type, your arm type. Definitely good with managing your hair and the fragile and the um how fragile how bleh, how fragile it is because when you have more fragile hair you want to be careful you want to treat your hair kindly you can't just be ripping through it like some girls of course you shouldn't rip through your hair anyway because it's curly hair but if it's not coily you know you can like have your days when you just like move real quickly and slick 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 or you know like move real swift you like oh how that girl just that slick like me that's the point to like that hair types are real like. You can't slip, slip crazy like that unless your hair is um stretched out. And also stretch, you just in your hair, you do not have to use a um blow dryer. It just needs to be wet. Working in your working with curly hair and it's um when it's wet is the best. Number one. Okay. Number one ways to work with your hair, ladies. Like ladies and gentlemen. Oh my gosh. Number one ways, folks, okay? Work with your hair when it is wet. When you are doing a you could be doing a ponytail, you could be doing Oops, excuse me. <laughs> You could be doing plates, you could be doing braids, twists, plaits, pleats, whatever. I think it's plaits, yes, plaits, whatever. You are the one cornrows, all of that. It's best to work your hair wet. I'm sure you always see, I always have my hair wet. Like my hair is damp right now. Even if it's like not soaking wet, you know, soaking wet is definitely good for tangling. Always be tangled your hair soaking wet. And that's another thing too with, um, you know, with coil, with hair types. Some looser textures, they like to, I mean, they um can mess with the hair and they like to tangle it. When it's like dry, and of course, they don't, I don't think they tangle, they be like comb out though. But mm -mm. well, that's don't do that, don't do that. I know you've seen it. Mm -mm. Sorry, that's not your hair type. That is not your hair type. Do not be over here combing through your type hair, your type four hair, or type three C, or the hair combing it out when it's dry. Mm -mm. No, that's that's bad. That's bad. Um, no, you are losing so much hair, you are literally just ripping off your hair. And yes, your hair is thick, so it's not gonna thin out after that one time. But if you make that a habit. Mm -mm. So I be seeing y'all. I be seeing y'all. Don't do that. Even to the ones who are looser textures like 3A, 3. Stop. Get some help. <laughs> That's me. But no, like, stop. Like, for real. Folks, we cannot be doing that. This hair is beautiful and it's flourishing and it's fragile. It's gentle. Be careful. Okay? Y'all need to be careful. Um, let me see what else I have in here. Oh, yes. Like I said, it's angling. Oh, I got it with all my things. Because I don't want to go too in-depth. I don't, like I said, it takes longer to process videos that are longer. I don't have, um, what's it called? I don't have all the equipment and tools to be making longer videos and to be processing them because it don't be working. And now I got space. I done cleared my space. I bought extra space for y'all. And it still didn't work. So I'm going through a new YouTuber thing and I'm trying to figure it out. So sorry for the shorter videos. If you like longer videos. You know, I'm sorry for that. If you don't, this is up your alley. I'm sure you're like, oh, yes, thank you. She be talking too much. Well, then you're welcome for now. Because I'm going to pull out some longer videos. But I won't, like, kill y'all. I won't kill y'all with too many long videos. Like, believe and I know we have, I'll be having a short a span, a attention span. And I don't want to be watching a longer video all the time. But, you know, I'll bring some out when I'm talking like this. I wish I could be more detailed. But um, I just want to keep it like real short and sweet. Like I said, don't want to go too crazy. Oh my gosh, I only got two braids done, <laughs> and that's only. I mean, I was moisturizing too. My mom got two braids done. I ran through all my stuff. I mean, 
I don't really got any more tips. It's kind of simple as it get. I said, you know, your hair change. Probably changes from the color sometimes. You get a dye. Factors and things. Also, hair type is genetics. I was just talking about this. I ain't going to go too deep into it, but I was just talking about this. Hair type is genetic. If you are born with hair type, you are born with it. The only way your hair texture will change and type will change is if it is chemically damaged or heat damaged, okay? So when you get heat damaged, and that's the thing too, when it gets heat damaged, chemically damaged, it, it's not coming back. And not out your head, it's just not coming back on the end. So you're like, oh, my hair's coming back. You're like, why is the end still straight? You gotta curl it and do all that flex right. Mm -mm. It's not coming back. I learned that. I learned them. So I learned both of them ways, actually, for myself saying, it don't come back. You gotta cut it. And it's, you know, it's okay. You wanna go baby steps, you can baby steps for sure. Cause I did not do like a big chop until my hair got longer. Like I just trimmed, trimmed lightly. And then when my hair got like, like it was more like down here, those types up on my shoulders. That's when I was like cutting and my natural hair was, my natural texture was coming back and stuff like that. And I was taking care of it. Then I kind of did some heat damage too because I forgot. I mean, I forgot. I wasn't educated on how to take care of my hair, which is why I made this video too. Because I know that it's hard when you're transforming. You don't really know how to manage. You might not really know how to manage your hair or how to um take care of it. Especially if you're taking care of chemical hair. Chemi um, what's called? Yeah. Chemical treated hair. Yeah, chemically treated hair. That is fine. That's why I'm here for y'all. I got you. And also, my last and final tip, I think this is like tip five or four, I don't know, maybe six, but last tip, trust the process and love your hair. Be gentle. Understand that it's a process. Understand that everybody here is not the same. Everybody here is not like your hair, even if they look the same. Like I said, that's when porosity comes into the fact. Like I have hair textures that look similar to girls. But they might have low porosity or like, you know what I'm saying? Or they might have high porosity. My hair doesn't absorb things too crazy, but also doesn't absorb, like, take a while. Like, my hair in the shower, washing it today, the water gets right up in there. So, like I said, everyone is different. Everyone is that. But love your hair is what I want to leave y'all with. And um, that's the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. I told y'all I don't have it out yet. But I don't know. I think I'll be, like, tuning in to the realest, the coolest. The latest like share comment and i'm out hey 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 i am out